There are a lot of distractions. Listen good now. There are a lot of distractions in our lives today. There's no doubt about it. How many of you hear that? There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that come and and they're they're constantly bidding for our time and for our attention. And there's a huge uh, uh, constant uh, ploy of the enemy and as well as just the secular of our life to put in front of us masses amount of distractions. And uh, how many of you would agree there's a lot of distractions going on? And um, during the time of fasting that we're doing here right now, uh, and each time really that I ever fast, I find it really refreshing in this one major area. It always, for me, it removes a major distraction out of my life called eating. And I know some of you just went, what a distraction? Well, listen and hear me through. Food and, and having to go through the process of that can become a distraction. Is that right? I mean, you know, every day you're thinking, okay, where are we going to eat and what are we going to eat or uh, what are we cooking and what are we fixing and what do we have at the house and what's in the refrigerator, you know. And it's just constant, constant, constant. Come on, have you heard me? And, and sometimes we build our life around eating when we're not hungry. You know, we do a lot of things that way today. We shop by not out of need, but we shop to be in an environment or in a process of being out. We, we, we do a whole lot of things today that are not based on necessity of something, but they're just occupying ourselves with, with doing something. Are you listening? And, and the same thing is true with eating. It's like we are constantly, you know, 12 o'clock comes and we got to eat. And how many of you know we eat and we're not even hungry? And we just do things out of an automatic impulse instead of doing something that is 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 you know, in line with what's going on with our lives. If I'm working and, and I don't get a chance to eat, well, then I, I don't even care because it, it does it's not what I'm living for. But we've let some of these things, like food, become the biggest issue in our life. It, it, really, it really causes me to take a good look during a time like this of fasting at many of the distractions that we allow in our lives, especially... In our spiritual lives, there's a lot of distractions in our lives, and we need to see them. And uh, here's three words. Distractions have to do with attractions that are birthed out of desire. Attractions have to do, uh, I'm sorry, distractions have to do with attractions that are birthed many times out of desire. How many of you know the Bible says that we are led astray by our own lust or our own desires? Hello? And, and oftentimes we're distracted because something has attracted us and moved us away from the course of what our life is supposed to be. Come on. And things come and things are put in front of us and they're oftentimes serious distractions from us pursuing what our purpose is. Are you listening? Now, when we tune in to our distraction of choice, uh, what are we tuning out? Whatever's causing you to get it distracted, remember, it has to distract you from something. You don't get distracted from nothing. You have to be at something. If I'm looking at this flower and someone says something to me, I turn, I'm distracted from something. Do you understand that? And, and our lives are a constant world of that ploy of the enemy to distract us from God's intended purpose in our lives. Are you really listening? And we have to start finding those distractions and we, start have, we have to start really trying to contend with those distractions. Distraction is the replacement of an attraction. Distraction is the replacement of attraction. When I'm attracted to something uh, uh, that's good for me, how many of you know the enemy will send, send a distraction to get me off that? Let me give you a few little practical examples. You know, there's people sitting in this room here. We're having church, 
and someone can do something, a baby can cry. <laughs> see, I mean, see, God is just, some of you that doubt, I just don't understand. Ma'am, I'll give you the 20 later for that. But, uh, not really. A baby cries and it distracted us. Is that right? And, and what, what, are, what are we tuning out to tune into? Let's just talk about it for a minute. In your life, what are you tuning out every day? I mean, think about it. Think about it now. What are you tuning out to tune into? Proverbs 30 says, there are four things in the earth that never are satisfied or never say enough. The grave, the womb, the water, and the and fire. Uh, and fire. Water on the earth and fire. Four things. The grave is never satisfied. The womb is never satisfied. Water in the dry earth is never satisfied. And fire, once it burns, cannot never be satisfied. And you know what, saints? We've let things attract us that distract us to attract us to things that can never satisfy us. Come on. How many of you know whatever you ate that was the best you ever ate is gone? And it doesn't satisfy you but for a short period. Is that right? But what really satisfies you? When you get my age, you start looking at values and you start looking at priorities and you start looking at things that are significant and you start saying, what really satisfies me? And the things that people are in hot pursuit for today, only when they get it do they find out it didn't satisfy if that weren't true, how come you have so many NBA, NFL, uh, American League, uh, National League baseball player, hockey player, all these millionaire kids that are in jail, are, are in trouble, are divorced three and four times, and et cetera, et cetera, how come, and got AIDS and everything else, if that was what satisfied, how come they ain't satisfied? I really believe this is a solution. This is a, this is a, 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 a real, not a solution is alone, but it is a solution, and it is a product of the problem. Listen real good. I believe people are lonely, and people need relationships. And I had a comment to what Joe Matera preached here Sunday night. People are afraid to be quiet. That's why most of our creation of disturbances are noise-based. Most of the things that are distracting us in society are noise-based. Come on. It's all about put on your iPod. I'm watching the Olympics, and these guys are going 90 miles an hour down to slalom slopes and skiing, and they got iPods hooked in their head. All these disturbances that are around us, think about it, they have noise based to us. Loneliness is a key. People are lonely. People are lonely. They're sitting in homes with families and they're still alone. People are sitting in church today and they're still alone. And so they have to fill their lives with noise and with something. So the enemy is such a master of distraction. He puts things in front of us constantly to keep us turned away from the intended plan that God has for us. What's our solution to all the distractions and the loneliness? As 1 Timothy 4.16 It says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. What does that mean? What does that really mean? Paul was saying this. The word take heed means in the Greek to grab a hold of something very tightly or to have an extremely firm grip on, on something that you regard as, as important. Are you hearing me? Paul said, look, you want to get your doctrine right and you want to be able to have it right so you can tell other people and all those good things. But he said, first of all, you got to do this. You got to stop and take heed to yourself. You got to stop and grab a hold of something that can hold on to you and that can speak to you. 